Welcome to the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Game six, the 76ers and the San Antonio Spurs. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Crickey. Glad you can be with us for more NBA playoff basketball on CBS. We have two top games for you today. Following the 76ers and the Spurs, we'll be going to Landover, Maryland, where the Washington Bullets and the Atlanta Hawks square off in the seventh and deciding game of that series. This one today could get rough. Some of the fellas are talking tough coming into it. For more on the game, let's go to my broadcast partner, Hunrod Hundley. Thank you, Don. With me, Doug Moe, the head coach of San Antonio. You had him on the ropes, Doug. Three games to one. Billy went into your place and won the game with that big change in the lineup. The big guys up front. That makes a big difference for you today. Well, it makes a big difference, but what people don't realize they only got three offensive boards the first half with that big lineup, and that really wasn't the uh, difference in the game. Uh, they hurt us uh, by us not being able to score. They stopped us defensively, and uh, but as far as the offensive boards, the least we've given up all year is three and a half. So uh, we didn't feel that that big lineup really hurt us that much from that standpoint. Okay, Doug. Good luck to you, Doug. Thank you, Rod. So to being with you. All right, we'll be back to talk with Billy Cunningham, but first, here's Don. This could get rough. The officials are going to be a very important factor in the game, as they always are, particularly today. There's been a lot of woofing and barking, as the players call it, most of it emanating from and around Daryl Dawkins, the man child, a six foot, 10 inch, 260 pound center for Philadelphia. Dawkins says he'll get nasty, nasty if need be to win this game. The whole season on the line again for Philadelphia. Now, for more on the Sixers, let's go back to Hot Hundley. All right, Billy Cunningham, the head coach of the Philadelphia team. You won a big game, Billy, and Julia serving at a guard has made a big difference for you. Yeah, uh, we created some mismatch problems, but the main reason was we were having problems on the defense and offensive boards, and that really gave us a lift. So how about uh, the game this afternoon? Do you plan any more changes? Or are you going to just play them like you did at San Antonio? Well, I am basically the same way. We're looking to go inside as much as possible. Uh, the key is if we can stop their transition and do the job on the boards. All right, good luck to you, Billy. Thank you, Rod. All right, now back to Don Cricket for the introduction of the starting lineups for today's game. Thank you, Hutt. And here we go with San Antonio. They'll go with Larry Keenan, their outstanding forward. Up front along with him, Mark Oberding, power forward. He'll be knocking heads with Daryl Dawkins, and that could be literal. They have a square off in the last game. Billy Paltz will be at center. And in the backcourt, the great George Gervin will be starting along with James Silas. Philadelphia with Bobby Jones and Caldwell Jones up front along with Daryl Dawkins are going with the big team. Cheeks, the ball handling guard from West Texas State starting in the back line with Julia Serving under coach Billy Cunningham. We are set to go. The San Antonio Spurs in the black uniforms. And there are the men who will be running this basketball game. John Vanek, Jake O'Donnell, Paul Mahalik, Jess Kersey is the alternate. Billy Paltz gets the tap and James Silas starts down the floor on offense for San Antonio. Julia Serving matched up against Silas. 76ers moved out to a quick lead in the first game, got the first 12 points, but Oberding gets inside. Dawkins plays off and Mark Oberding puts San Antonio in the lead. This must be the biggest starting lineup in pro basketball, this Philadelphia club. Gigantic front line and they've got a 6-7 man in the backcourt in Irving. And the first whistle is blown already. It's inside as Dawkins and Oberding were bumping down low. It's going to go against Mark Oberding. He's trying to body check Dawkins inside. Bobby Jones goes outside to Cheeks. Here is Julia Irving against George Gervin. These are the two prime players in the game. Gervin and Irving. From the outside, Cheeks can't make it work. Irving knocked it out of bounds, so San Antonio puts it in play, right? You'll see that the uh, San Antonio club will give a lot of help on Irving with Irvin and Salas doubling up as they did that play, and they found Cheeks wide open, but he missed a shot. He has been hitting 64% in the playoffs between these two clubs. Here is Gervin taking it down low. The Iceman off glass, and quickly the San Antonio Spurs put up the first four points of the game. Cheeks had played a brilliant game the other night for Philadelphia. He feeds off now to Dawkins. The Manchild gets inside. Mark Gerberding did not deny him the ball, and with the great strength that Dawkins has, he just went right to the hoop, unmolested for the layup. Things could start to heat up in this game. There are going to be a lot of bumping inside as Paltz comes outside, does not get it to go. 7 1, Colwell Jones sweeps it down. Here comes Julia Serving, leading on the right flank. Was Dawkins, but the intercept is made by Keenan. It's back the other way. Racehorse basketball. They take off of those defensive boards like the starter's gun goes up. San Antonio, the highest scoring club in the league the last two years, now leads 6 2 on Oberding shot. Now that play was set up when Irving threw that ball away. Ironically, as great a player as Julius is, he doesn't handle the ball that well. He leads the Philadelphia team in turnovers, and he just had one there on that fast break. He should have gone to the left side. He tried to throw it to the right, and it was picked off. 
because they want him to have the ball so much and Dawkins will shoot it when he gets it as he's done twice now Caldwell Jones he's got the bad touch but the good rebound strength can't get it to go and here comes Larry Keenan down the floor San Antonio heading right to the hoop who gets this one inbound to the 76ers. They have such a tremendous job of, of blocking out. Caldwell Jones, a seven footer. And you got Dawkins, 6'11. Up front, Bobby Jones, who's probably the best defensive forward in basketball. Julia serving vitally important to the 76ers at the top of his game. He makes Philadelphia win. He alone puts so much pressure on a defense, it opens up the rest of the offense for the 76ers. Right now, as Gervin goes down low, we have another foul call. That'll be against George Gervin holding Irving. Uh, Julia's trying to post him up low on the left side. So the referees here early in the quarter have been calling it pretty close. Irving moving on Gervin. They both have to watch for the foul. They must stay in the game. Julius Irving takes it baseline and gets it through, and the 76ers are now down by two. Super move. He went to that baseline. Billy Paul switched to him, and Julius reversed it off the glass with English. Tremendous play. An excellent basketball play. Looked like Irving was going to take it up. Then he went down for the reverse. Oberding fires again. He's got three hoops now. And the Spurs are up 8-4. Where you been, Big Mark? That guy hitting outside, he's not supposed to do that. That's he likes the shooting. starting. He likes the, He was sitting on the bench, usually the first man off. They went with Bristow as a starter. They needed more muscle to combat Dawkins. Who's posted low right now. Cheeks coming around. Lots of switching on the San Antonio defense. They trap. They'll double up on the ball. Here's another foul call. And the Spurs are going to have a problem pretty soon. This is move a moment ago by Julia serving baseline right. Watch Paltz there. And Julia went into the air, glided by, and reversed it off the glass with the right hand going right to left. Tremendous play. And on this last play, Caldwell Jones will get a couple of free throws. Fouled, turning to the basket in the act of shooting. Caldwell is an interesting short rod. He's renowned to remain rather anonymous at 7-1 because he's not a scorer. But he gives him a lot. I think he's the most underrated uh, big man in basketball. He is. This club would not think of trading him. Many clubs have been interested at him in the last couple of years, but they keep him around, and he really does the job, whether it's coming off the bench or starting. Well, he just gave him two from the free throw line, and as you see, it is now a two-point game against San Antonio. This is game six. Spurs and Black lead the series three games to two. 76ers season is on the line in this one again. They must win. Gervin up. Second shot. This one doesn't go. Jones outlet pass, and Oberding comes up with a loose basketball. So the San Antonio Spurs now have intercepted Philadelphia outlet passes twice in the game, and now as we have a man head to the basket, a whistle blows. It's like Salas trying to drive down the middle. He's got a foul. Looking defensively now for Philadelphia, Maurice Cheek, small man playing George Gervin. He's done a great job. He's had an unbelievable playoff, and they think here in Philadelphia he should have been the rookie of the year. Julius got the last personal, so he has his first. Here is Silas. Kicks it inside, and the Iceman puts on moves. He can do it. George Gervin, he puts a lot of pressure on every defense. Once he starts to turn it on, you don't turn him off. The NBA's top scorer of the past two seasons. He's been averaging 25.8 in this series, shooting 57% from the field. That time he went in low to get the basket over Cheeks. Gervin personally can take command of a tight game and break it open. And again, the whistle blows. They're keeping a tight rein on this one. They knocked the ball out of bounds away from Irving. Again, it was Gervin and Salas double teaming Irving. You'll see a line of that all afternoon. As Coach Doug Moe, the coach of San Antonio, comes up to yell some defensive instructions. Now as Bobby Jones throws up a shot, the ball's going to go the other way, and that brings Coach Cunningham off the bench. Our first dispute of the day, and again, it's officials one, Cunningham nothing. And Billy unhappy. Boy, this game means so much to both clubs. There'll be no tomorrow for Philadelphia if they lose this one. Silas pulling up for the jump shot. Tough shot. Can't get it to go, but George Gervin. It'll count. It will go, and he was fouled on the play. The George Gervin getting inside where it can get me, but he goes right up against the two seven-footers for Philadelphia and slams it down on him in your face. Right here it is. Gervin on the rebound play. Fake, take it right up, and there's Dawkins and Caldwell Jones that connected with him for the foul. A 13-6 game, San Antonio extending now to its biggest advantage of the game. We're in the first period, 7.48 to play in it. Following this game on CBS, you'll see the seventh and deciding game of the Washington Bullets and Atlanta Hawks, the other Eastern Final Series. Here's a loose basketball that Caldwell Jones picks up before it goes in Hot Hundley's lap. Jones! 
drills it, he's not supposed to do that. It's most unusual to see a seven-footer go outside like that and hit a jump shot. Beautifully done. Nice touch by Caldwell Jones. 13 to 8, San Antonio. For the past two seasons, the Spurs have been the highest scoring team in the NBA, and they don't do it playing the four-corner offense. They put the ball up in a hurry. They don't need a shot clock. Gervin can't get it to work. Here comes the outlet. Maurice Cheeks takes it in the middle. Lanes fell on either side, and Caldwell Jones takes it low. Larry Keenan, he's heard from for the first time in the first quarter. Great hustle there by Dawkins. Saved that ball for Philadelphia. Just sheer hustle. Now, Irving puts it up, and Keenan rebounds, and here come the Spurs on the run. A travel on Larry Keenan, superbly played on defense by Bobby Jones. Bobby picked him up in the backcourt. It could have been a charge either way, but they got him for traveling, so Philadelphia will take the ball. And we've got a timeout with six minutes and 52 seconds left in the first quarter. And San Antonio with a five-point lead, 13-8. Spectrum in Philadelphia. Game six, Eastern playoff series, San Antonio and the 76ers. Spurs out in front here in the first period, 13-8. 6.51 to play in it. Lots of blocking down low now. Double post set up by the 76ers. They try to set up a man to come off at the shoot. Dawkins gets the ball, loses the handle, back to the black shirts. The Irving playing at a guard, just a bad pass there. He tried to hit Dawkins down low. They were really muscling. A lot of contact, and you'll see that all afternoon. Both clubs very physical up front. I'm sure either the officials warned both coaches to talk to their players because there were some strong things being said in the papers here. Daryl Dawkins talking about getting mean. He got mean in the game five Wednesday night. He put a shot on Oberding as he was going down the floor and knocked him into row J. <laughs> got a uh, loose ball foul here on George Gervin on the rebound play of the missed shot by Keenan. And so it'll be Philadelphia's ball. That's the second foul on Gervin and four team fouls on San Antonio. That could be a factor as we have 620 still to play in the first period. Bobby Jones, he's against Keenan. San Antonio doing a nice job doubling up on the ball inside. Dawkins forces a bad shot, and Keenan rebounds. And here come the Spurs. They like to go. Hit that go pedal. Irvin pulls up. And Oberding gets a free one. Didn't have to leave the ground. Caldwell Jones had moved inside. The ball just bounded over his head. I believe that's a foul. <laughs> Dawkins. That might be. The big fella grabbing the arm of Billy Potts as he tried to turn and put that jump shot up. That's his, that's his first 13 foul on Philadelphia. Daryl's not going with as much gold around his neck these days. <laughs> Pretty heavy earlier in the season. Billy, of course, with that bandage on the left leg, suffering from a slight hamstring pull. But he's a pretty gutty performer, and he'll be right up there at the line. He'll have another free throw coming. Mike Gale replaces George Gervin at a guard. That's awfully early here, but I'm sure that Doug Moe feeling that Gervin with two fouls, he does not want him to get another one here on the first quarter, and we have almost six minutes remaining. Then Antonio in the lead, 15 to 8 on the 76ers home floor. Philadelphia running a patterned offense, coming down, setting up. Not too much motion in that offense of Philadelphia. And Antonio doesn't want that lane to open up. They let him shoot from the outside. They don't want him to get inside. Cheeks takes a look. Switch off on Keenan. Here's Dawkins. And Daryl Dawkins goes up and over the San Antonio defense and brings Philadelphia back to within five. Made a good move, but when he got that basketball, he held on to it. Got good control before he made his move. He realized he's in low. He had his man right where he wanted him, and he got the easy shot. Mike Gale heading hard to the basket. 76ers defensive rebound. Oberding takes it away. Gets it over to Keenan, and Larry Keenan hits the shot. They give San Antonio a 17 to 10 lead. Big play by Oberding. The ball was Philadelphia's, and he took it away. Very physical player. He likes to mix it up. Kept the ball alive, as you mentioned, and he's doing a good job thus far, even though Dawkins at times has been getting him low. Julius didn't hit a thing, didn't even get glass, and here comes Keenan back the other way. Two on two break, Keenan fires over, and here's a leadoff pass over Ding to Silas, intercepted by Julius Irving as he tried to go back. To Mark Oberding, and the doctor surveys the field down court now, looks to settle things down. They have the two big seven foot centers playing 20 feet in the basket. Dawkins hit it, but they don't like him out there. I'm sure that San Antonio will let Dawkins keep taking that shot. You don't want him in low, make him go outside, but Darrell has the ability to hit from outside. 422 left to play, first period. Spurs lead the game 17 12. Here's Silas putting the shot up, and the rebound comes down to Dawkins. Torrin up. Goes to Cheeks in the 76ers run. Again, San Antonio doing a good job getting the defense back, cordoning off, stopping the break. Lead down low to Cheeks. He challenges the defense. 
Harris takes it, 6 1, gets it out. Super play. He had the defense thinking he was going to go up from the left side and reverse to the right. He has had an unbelievable playoff. Maurice Cheeks averaging 21 a game in the five playoff games. A rookie, here's Silas as Philadelphia doubles up on him, and Gale almost lost the handle. Keenan looking for points now. Defended by Bobby Jones. Jones on the right flank. Cheeks leads the way. And Maurice Cheeks takes it to Griffin. Again, a little backcourt rookie for West Texas State. Puts Philadelphia's points up, and they're back to it in one. And on that play, Bobby Jones was coming down the right side. He had a defense thinking that they were going to go to him. Here's the play. Cheeks going all the way. You'll see Bobby Jones on the right. Cheeks took it all the way in. Protected the ball well, put it up with the left hand, and got the bucket, and San Antonio leads by one. There is Fitz Dixon, the man who owns the 76ers. He's the gentleman who coined the phrase, we owe you one, after they lost three years ago to Portland. He doesn't uh, count his money, he weighs it. <laughs> got a full load. <laughs> Fitz could own three if they don't come out of this one today. Pressure's on the 76ers. They trail by one right now. Hitting the outcome of the second game, San Antonio doesn't know whether they're going to go to Washington for a Sunday game or go back home for the seventh game of this series. Or if Atlanta wins, they'll play Atlanta at home. So they have to wait and see what happens. Oberding fading away, hits it down. Here's a young man who came out of the University of Minnesota, played only one year of college basketball, was a standout player in the Big Ten. Went into pro basketball after his freshman year. He'd only be a rookie in pro basketball now. He's actually in his third year. He's averaging nine points in this playoff, and he's got eight already here in the opening quarter. Daryl Dawkins forces a shot, and the big guy makes it work again. Dawkins forcing some hoops up, but he is knocking it down. It's a one-point game again, 19-18. We have 2.45 left to go first period. Silas takes it to the basket for San Antonio and goes the distance. That's a great little guard, Silas, really coming back. Right back the other way, Bobby Jones flies to the basket. He just took off. He went to Rio on that one and got it down. Bobby could fly, and he, as you mentioned, he took off. Got a perfect feed from Cheeks. Down the left side, we'll take a look. Here he goes. Just softly beating the man, going up, laying a shot up underhand style off the glass. And he's fouled on the play. He'll have a free throw looking for the three-point play. Larry Keenan defending against him had to be cautious not to foul him. As the Spurs are over the limit now, Jones with two chances to convert the three-point play. His defense has been extraordinary in this game. He gets such excellent position. He stopped Keenan twice now, taking the ball back from him. Once he forced a turnover on the travel when he blocked off Keenan. Another time took it away. And we're locked up at 21 in the first period. Mike Gale on the outside. Cheeks harassing him. George Gervin said of Cheeks, he's like a pest. He's like a bug on you. He said, I was going to bring a can of raid to this game. Cheeks has done a big job, and now he leads the breakdown court. Feeds off to Dawkins. He's looking for that hoop today, the big guy. Didn't get it there. Mike Green in the game. Taps the rebound out. Here come the Spurs on the run. Lead pass goes to Silas. James Silas pull on a sweet shot off the dead run. Silas goes high and gives San Antonio the two-point lead. What a big old ranch down there in Texas. Kind of like a ranch in the lunch of the summer. 300,000 chickens on it. <laughs> Depending on the coyote population, that's what he raises, chickens. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Got to raise something on it. Junior Irving looks down. Here's Bobby Jones feeding across to Caldwell Jones. And Caldwell Jones... Twice now has struck from the outside. Unbelievable. The small guys are going down low That's and hitting right. The big guys are coming out front. Form chart didn't hold up in this one so far. Irving soaring up, sailing down with the defensive board and leading the break the distance. Julius Irving. All the way. He saw daylight at the free throw line. On that last move, he took one giant stride and then went right in and laid it up. We'll look at it a moment later. And so now the 76ers come back to take the lead after trailing by seven. It's 25-23. A minute and five seconds to play in the first period. Gale looks down low to Oberding. He's been tough against Caldwell Jones. Oberding feeds to Mike Gale. And Dawkins rebounds. 76ers are crashing those boards. Now here is Irving going for the alley-oop pass. Cunningham looks for the foul call. There is none. It comes back the other way. San Antonio looks to tie the game. And they do on Larry Keenan shot off the baseline. Way to move there. That pass the last time by Cheeks was up high. Irving almost had it. That would have been a phenomenal play if he'd have cut that ball above the rim and been able to get the field goal. 
What a game. George Gervin, who's been out for a rest, getting set to come back in along with backup center Kobe Dietrich. Cheeks with a head fake, heads to the basket. He has been so tough but does not get the roll in Overding. With a lot of power, comes in and gets the rebound. That's how much time remains in the first period. They'll look for the last shot, run it down to about 10 seconds, then start making your move. And hopefully that Philadelphia will not get a shot away. Score tied at 25, eight seconds. That's the game clock you're looking at. Silas fires, knocks it down. And San Antonio takes a two-point lead. Here's the final shot of the period. And so we play the first 12 minutes. And two points separate the San Antonio Spurs and the Philadelphia 76ers in this. Game six. Here's Julia serving earlier in the quarter. Made that move down the middle. Watch this move. Soar all the way up like the big bird. Softly lay it up and get the field goal. So we've got an end of the first period with San Antonio up by two. Billy Cunningham looking on now as his 76ers are down by two heading into the second period. Billy with that blue pinstripe suit on, and he's wearing that one because he wins more games when he has those clothes on. He's a very superstitious coach. And there is Doug, Doug Moe, his counterpart. They went to the same high school in Brooklyn, Erasmus Hall. Billy followed him there, then followed him to the University of North Carolina. Also following the Carolina Cougars of the old ABA as Alan Bristow's in the game. Moe says a Cunningham follows me everywhere. I'm his idol. <laughs> Alan Bristow, he's six seven forward from VPI. Normally a starter, but when Philadelphia made this change to the big lineup, that forced Doug Moe to put Overding in the starting lineup. Steve Mix is now in the game for Philadelphia. He gets the ball over to Cheeks, firing from the outside. Not much spin on the ball, and Mix pulls his way in. Offensive rebound right to the hoop for a basket, and he was fouled on the play. Big play by Mix coming off the bench. Super play, and he's fouled going in by, by uh, Bristow. Here it is. Mix had 21 in that victory down in San Antonio. There's your move, and Bristow fouled him from behind as Mix kind of jumped back into him to force contact. It reminds you that following this game, you'll see the seventh and deciding game of the Washington Bullet Atlanta Hawk playoff series at Landover, Maryland. Here at Philadelphia, this is Don Cricky with Hot Rod Hunley. As you see, we've got a one-point game. Philadelphia now in the lead on the three-point play, 28 to 27. Gervin heading to the basket, puts it up on Dawkins, and he draws a shooting foul. Actually, Caldwell Jones blocked that shot, but I believe it was Dawkins that got the foul. That's right. We'll look at it again. Gervin will go to the left. Watch Caldwell Jones, number 11, help Dawkins. He'll go up and block the shot cleanly right there, but Dawkins riding him from behind got the foul. So Gervin will have two free throws coming. Said, I talked to him before the game out, Rod. He said, if they double up on me, he said, I'll kill him, hit the open man. I'm going to be looking for him. He that also time, looks for that hoop. Well, that time we put her up underneath. It's a good move when you're that close to the basket. And with all the offensive moves that he's got, it's best to take that shot. And San Antonio comes back to take the lead as Caldwell Jones heads hard to the basket. And another foul call from John Vanek inside stops play. This time the 76ers go to the line. Mike Green called for the foul. Here's your play. Caldwell went in. He wanted to dunk, and then he changed his mind, tried to softly put it up, and he was fouled by Green going to the basket. So the big fellow will be at the line. He moves well for a big man, putting the ball on the floor. He does. He can run leg for length. They call Mike Green, the San Antonio center right now. The game right now. The count. He wears a floor-length leather coat. Floor-length. The alligator base. <laughs> With the alligator base. All right. Caldwell Jones. Call him anything he wants to when you're 7-1. I'd Rod Hunley described his outfit he was wearing before the game. Went through the silk shirt, the gold watch, and said, and the alligator base, the alligator too. Those are illegal now, aren't they? You can't kill those anymore. <laughs> 30 to 29 is the score. Philadelphia is in the lead. 11 minutes to play in the first half. And now, right back the other way, comes George Gervin, who's hit for 11 points to lead all scores. And it is San Antonio by a point. Well, Henry Bibby in the lineup at a guard. 6 1 from UCLA. Bibby normally a starter. Oh, well, Jones had been killing him. He usually doesn't put the ball in the air at all. He's already got 10. And he's hit three outside jump shots right at the top of that circle. They're giving him the free shot, and Caldwell is saying, thank you so very much. He'll take it. Now down low, Gale loses the ball. Here comes Bibby. Cheek stops down on the break, and Henry Bibby with that. UCLA cool. Decides not to run against an overmatch. He brings it up and gives to Mix. Steve Mix turns. Side. There's a steal for Bibby. Henry 
Bibby comes up on the trap and steals the ball. As Philadelphia leads by three after trailing earlier by seven. But Henry loses the floor and the ball. Well, that play a moment ago was talking about Mix backing his way in. And then he opened up across the lane. He got daylight. That's his best move. He's left-handed. He likes to turn across the lane with that little left-handed hook shot. Now Mike Gale will put the ball in backcourt working with George Gervin. Gervin has 11. Caldwell Jones leads Philadelphia with 10. Oberding is hit for 8 for the San Antonio Spurs. Gale on the outside. You see Philadelphia drawing back almost his own. Playing away. Giving him the outside shot. Both teams giving the outside <laughs> shot. Bristow with the offensive rebound. And Alan Bristow is fouled by Murray's Chiefs. It's like a volleyball game. They are really going after that offensive board. Aggressively, we'll look again at San Antonio. The fans thought they should have been traveling. They get three or four rebounds on this play. Gervin tips. Mike Green tips. Green again. Nothing will go. Finally, the ball goes underneath. Picked off by Gervin. He fakes. Rise reverse with the left hand, and Cheeks grabbed him for the foul. There's Presto. Cheeks right on him. Philadelphia down by seven in the first period, down by two at the end of the first period. Now up by three, 34, 31. Alan Bristow at the free throw line. He was drafted, you may recall, out of Virginia Tech in the second round by Philadelphia and cut. There's Doug Collins with him in the lineup. The 76ers won 47 games and lost 35. Without Doug Collins, they're 18 and 22. An all-star guard out for the season for some time now with a foot injury. They had a stress fracture of the foot. He just aggravated it, tried to play. He's a real competitor, one of the best guards in basketball. Philadelphia sorely misses him in his lineup. Hey, right in that lane, it is getting mean. You proceed at your own risk down in there today. Got a lot of beef down at alley. <laughs> Next Friday night, you'll see a playoff game, 11.30 Eastern time. That'll be Phoenix at Seattle. The Western final series, the Suns and the Sonics, both advancing with four games to one win. Now Maurice Cheeks sees everybody pull off, so he takes it himself and gives Philadelphia again the three-point lead, 36 to 33. Cheeks has six points. Mike Green puts it up. And Steve Mix has come off the bench to play a muscle game, a strong game, a very effective inside game. Gets the ball back for the 76ers. Henry Bibby having some trouble keeping grounded. He might have turned an ankle. Bibby up slow, but he's all right. Julius Irving came in, went for the basketball. Well, they're really getting aggressive. Uh, San Antonio defensively. Bibby thought he was fouled. Two team fouls on the Spurs, rather on uh, Philadelphia. So Mix brings the ball in now for the 76ers. Here is Henry Bibby in the backcourt with him as Cheeks now with the ball. Silas against him. They're playing him tighter outside and Cheeks takes it in. A reject nicely done by Green who tips it out to Gale. And Antonio coming down on the run feed off to Kobe Dietrich who doesn't get many but he gets two here. Mike Gale made a perfect setup on that play down the alley and it was originated by the block by Mike Green. One point game 36 to 35 Philadelphia. Eight minutes and 25 seconds to play first half. Oh, well, Jones didn't get it to work this time. Has hit three earlier. And here comes Keenan at 6'9". He can lead the break like a backcourt player. Larry Keenan throwing up bricks, though, in this game. He's not been able to hit from the outside, except one time off the baseline, you'll remember. And here is Keenan getting the rebound. Doug Moe gets up now, calling the play out. Gale sets it up. Down low, Keenan down low, and Gale's going to force a shot as the shot clock winds down. Poorly executed by the Spurs, and the Sixers have a chance now to go up by three. San Antonio starting to trap the ball more now. They're doubling up on the basketball, tripling it on this play. As Caldwell Jones, apparently he got the call, Rod. Right? Go to that hoop. Took a jump hook shot. He was fouled by Mike Green. It's not a very smart play on uh, Mike's part because that's not a good percentage shot. We'll look again. Caldwell out about eight or ten feet with a jump hook. That's not the easiest shot in basketball. Yet Green came into him and made contact. So Caldwell will get a couple of free throws. Caldwell Jones with the foul on Green, his second, and Jones now with ten points goes to the free throw line. 36-35 Philadelphia. Game six with the 76ers trailing three games to two. They have to win to stay in it. It's seven minutes and 38 seconds left here in the first half, and already San Antonio is over the limited fouls. So Caldwell Jones will have three to make two. George Gervin, the Iceman on the bench for San Antonio, looks on. 
The Iceman's been getting it done while he's in there, 11 points, but you see the three fouls that now force Doug Moe to rest his super scorer. The man who's led the NBA in scoring the last two years, the only guard in the history of the league to lead the league in scoring twice consecutively. Ice. I had never led the league in scoring when I played. How are you going to lead the league average at six a game? This I was aware of, Rod. <laughs> That's really unusual. Backcourt man Miravich has done it with uh, the New Orleans Jazz as an NBA leading scorer. And normally it comes up front. Gervin shooting 57% in the playoffs. His scoring average is down somewhat. Hasn't been taking as many shots, but certainly very effective. He's a great percentage shooter in addition to being a great scorer. Here's Gale blocking it off in the middle. Now it's a foot race. Henry Bibby pursues. Bobby Jones against him. Gale had have a problem with Jones, you would think, when he takes it right by the 6'9 defender and lays it in. And again, it was Irving's bad pass that set it up. He didn't bounce the ball. Now Jones has to force a shot as he almost lost control. Here is Mix tipping the ball away. Steve Mix has helped the 76ers a lot since he's come off the bench. The game is tied at 37. Julius Irving, take it if you want, doctor, they say. He does not. He throws to Gale. One on one. Bibby's back. Lead on the right side goes to James Silence. And the Spurs take back the lead. I really got to think that Irving feels uncomfortable in his two position. He's not sure whether it's like that time to take the shot or to pass it. He was wide open, started to go up, then dropped it off. Nobody was there but Mike Gale. And San Antonio gets the hit. Now they go to the Julius Serving and he flies on over the defense and hammers it down. They're up slapping hands in the stands as Julius Serving ties the game. That's where he's at his best, is when he's close to that basket. Irving now with six points. We have 6.05 left to play first half. Keenan fakes and puts it up. Off balance, Larry Keenan gets it down. An all-star forward for the Spurs. And San Antonio has back the lead, 41 to 39. You see the turnovers in this game. Eight for Philadelphia, five by San Antonio. We got Larry Keenan guarding Irving now. They're going to get a charge now. Mahalik blows the whistle on Philadelphia, so it comes back now to the San Antonio Spurs before it does. We have well, a timeout. There's a play a moment ago when they lobbed that ball up high to Julia Irving. Perfect feed for Caldwell Jones, and right there, the doctor went up and ducked it through. 41 39, San Antonio. Here's Coach Moe now, counseling at San Antonio Spurs. Looking at the Philadelphia cause, uh, Don, Steve Mix in the lineup at this point. In that game Thursday night at San Antonio, he played 36 minutes. He had 21 points. That's the most time he's put in since he played 40 minutes in the final game of the 78 season. So. Uh, here's a, a sub coming in that has really been doing a job for this ball club. Philadelphia has been a tough team to score against from a percentage standpoint. They're about the best in the NBA. Only a couple of clubs average better than 50% shooting against Philadelphia in the regular season. They've got so much height inside, as you were pointing out, Rod. I think it's probably the biggest lineup in basketball. Starting five. Well, the great block by Irving coming over the top of Salas on that play. So Julius out of guard will play Salas defensively. Here it is again. Salas going in from the left side, putting it up with the right hand. He showed him the ball. That made it easy for Irving to block. San Antonio has been doing well in an area they usually do not do well, and that's offensive rebounding. As Oberding hits it from off the baseline of the floor, they have 10 offensive rebounds in this game, and just three for Philadelphia. Last Doug Mo, I'd send the rest of this ball club to the same restaurants that Mark Oberding eats in. They're going to be the thinnest club in the NBA, with the exception of the big fella. <laughs> they call Gervin and Green the twin toothpicks. Dan low the rebound is taken down by Oberding. He's a tight end, this guy, and he pins right down the other way, puts his head down. I know one thing, he's not at all concerned about having him bang heads with Daryl Dawkins. He looks forward to it. Gets up early. Now Doug Moe is up protesting. The foul on Mix, I believe. They're getting a little rough away from the basketball. There's Maurice Cheeks from West Texas State. Boy, I mean, this is, he is as good a guard uh, for a rookie in the league. I got to go along with that. He plays very well. The Cunningham feels uh, that he's probably as good as any of them in the NBA. Plays with a lot of control, a lot like Nixon on the Lakers. Great speed. It's an offensive foul. Salas leaning into Mix as he tried that leap and leaner on the right side. Good call. So Silas now gets his second personal foul. 
as the Spurs have opened up a four point lead with 445 left to play and now the humongous one is getting set to come back in. <laughs> Daryl Dawkins. The big guy ready to let her rip again. Here is Irving trying a bank shot. Caldwell Jones offensive rebound. Right back up. Jones is keeping on firing. Oh, look at Overton. He is really upset. John Bannock making a call against Overding as he and Mix were pushing underneath. Big Mark. Can he I doesn't like that call. We'll look at it again. Watch him shove in there. There's the hand with Overding in the back of Mix. And Mix turned around. Bannock, the official on the baseline. Here's the other angle. We'll look at it again. Caldwell Jones on the offensive rebound puts it up. Watch Mix in there in front and Overding with the arm in the back. So John Bannock alertly on top of the play making a, a good call. There he is. Double D. Darrell can take down the backboard. He says, that's my ambition in life, is to rip it all down. Take the glass, the frame, and all of it on a dunk. Haven't had a guy to handle that since our friend Gus Johnson. <laughs> that's right. Gus ripped it down coast to coast. Gus could have that good fill time for you, Rod. Have a 45-minute delay when he do that. <laughs> well, that brought in a new board. The Knicks at the free throw line. It's a two-point game, San Antonio. 4.25 left to play. First half. We'll be going to highlights of other NBA playoff series at halftime. And of course, following this game, you will see Washington and Atlanta, the seventh and deciding game. Overding heads to the basket, goes to the floor. Keenan gets the rebound. He scores and he's fouled on the play. That'll be Daryl Dawkins called for that foul. Alert play by Keenan. Right in the, happened to be in the right spot at the right time. The ball came right to him. We'll watch it again. As Overding goes across the lane, left to right, tries to shot the ball, partially knocked away. Dawkins could not find a handle. He was going the other way, and Keenan picked it up. I got the field goal right there. Nice soft touch. And over his shoulder for the foul is Daryl Dawkins. There's Billy Paulson. So Daryl Dawkins visit back into the game with short lived as he's taken out with his third personal foul. Dawkins has three. 45 41 San Antonio. Larry Keenan at the free throw line. Can't get it to work. And down with the rebound is Bobby Jones. Here comes Cheeks on the run. Blows on by Keenan. That holds it up. One of Philadelphia's problems when they start this big lineup is that Caldwell Jones and Daryl Dawkins both have a tendency to get in foul trouble early. And here's Dawkins with three already. That could turn out to be a problem. Jones on a continuation play. Basket would have gone had he been able to hit it. He did not, but he goes to the free throw line to it's shoot. It's fouled by uh, Mike Gale on this play. Mix with a very alert pass. Jones cutting right there. Gale bumped him as he tried to go to the basket and put the shot up. Missed what should have been a field goal. He had an easy shot, but it came off the iron. So Bobby for two free throws. Bobby Jones from North Carolina. Came here in that offseason trade and of course sent George McGinnis out to the Denver Nuggets. Jones hits the free throw and it's now 45 to 43 game. Philadelphia is back to within two. Mike Gale as Cheeks picks him up right across the midcourt line, not giving him any room to operate. They can use that shot clock getting the ball in. Keenan at the free throw line. Mix doubles up on him. Keenan lets fly. Can't get it to work. Gets his own rebound and puts it back up. And a foul call inside. So Keenan starts to come alive with the inside game. Bobby Jones came over his shoulder. We'll take a look again. Here's Keenan. A little leap and leaner. He misses, but he alertly follows his own shot. Fine play. Then takes it right to the hoop. And coming over his shoulder for the foul was Bobby Jones as Keenan leaned in to Mix to take him out of the play. Larry Keenan from Memphis State, a very quick forward, able to get position inside. He has 10 points, gets 11 now. And the Spurs open up a three-point lead. It's been tight all the way. Biggest lead of the game, a seven-point advantage, San Antonio first period. At the end of the period, it was a two-point lead for the Spurs. Now we have a four-point lead up on the board for San Antonio as Cheeks brings the ball down court for Philadelphia. This is the sixth game of this Eastern playoff series. The 76ers in white must win to stay in the series. Mix fades back, puts it up, and down with the rebound is Caldwell Jones. Well done by the big man. No one blocked him out. When a shot goes up, you should block your man away from the basket. He had about three feet of running room, and just went on the fly and grabbed the rebound over the top. And Caldwell Jones has been a force on offense. He has 13 points to lead all scores. And here come the 76ers again. Cheeks with that letter high dribble comes down flying. He knows when to keep it going, when to pull up and set the play. He sees those spurs back, cordoning off the lane, nothing there to penetrate. Irving fires off balance but gets it down. Irving hits it. He has 
play, and the game is tied at 47. Now with Coach Doug Moe up and shouting out to his Spurs, yelling to settle down, work a play. Silas throws up the shot, and Philadelphia starts to dominate off the backboards. Down court comes Chicks on the ejection, and do we have a foul call? Well, that's a great block by James Salas. He came out of nowhere and went over the top of his own man and blocked that shot. Well, look again. Here's Salas, 13. Cheeks right there. Watch it come right over the top of him and block the ball. Fine play by Maurice Cheeks. Philadelphia will have control. We've got a timeout with 225 left. 47, we're tied. Get him hot. That's Billy Cunningham, the coach of Philadelphia. You think he's going over a play? He's going to run coming out of this timeout? No. That's the seating plan for the dinner tomorrow night at the Hall of Fame banquet in Springfield, Mass., of which I will be the MC, Mr. Cricky. You will indeed, Rod. That's a big event. The annual basketball Hall of Fame basket banquet in Springfield with Hot Hundley at the mic and Will Chamberlain, an inductee. Yes, there'll be several others. Pete Moore will be going in. Ray Myers, great coach of DePaul. Jim Enright. Great official. Pete Newell, of course, a national championship team at Cal. And then great career in the NBA. The Lakers and Golden State. Right now, we have a 47-47 score on the board. 219 left to play in the first half. This is Don Cricky with Rod Hundley. The third personal foul has just been assessed against Carwell Jones. So both Philadelphia centers, Dawkins and Jones, are playing with three. And we have both clubs in the penalty nine. And Caldwell in a loose ball foul and a rebound play. That'll give Billy Paltz two free throws and a chance to break the tie. He does. Billy Paltz from St. John's. Playing with a very troubled left thigh today. They didn't think he'd start because of a muscle pull, but he's in there. Working oh, hard. Caldwell chose, but no one around. Maurice Cheeks grabbed the rebound and threw it three feet behind him and out of bounds. So San Antonio gets a little present here early in the first half. They have a one-point lead in the game. It was two points at the quarter, San Antonio. Philadelphia came back to lead early in the second period. Now the Spurs have come back. Their offensive rebounding, if any one factor stands out that has not been prevalent earlier in the series, it's been San Antonio's ability to get the offensive board and get another shot back up. Keenan fires. He's forcing shots. On that one he did. Leaned over. The defense could not get it down. And here comes Maurice Cheeks leading the 76ers. Jones pulls up. Oh, well, Jones going to go after that hoop all day long. He's the high scorer with 13 so far. Here's Silas. Oh, he hit his shoe. Did not hit the floor, hit his shoe. Well, ahead of layup. He tried to put the ball on the floor. He couldn't get his foot out of the way. That's an unfortunate play for San Antonio. Dawkins and Caldwell Jones, the two big men I talked about, each with three personal fouls for Philadelphia. Happens even to the great ones. Hit that shoe with the ball. Well, in particular, if you're like 6'3 and wear a size 14 shoe. The sizes out there are a whole lot bigger than 14. I don't know what Keenan's got on, but you can you get paddles with him, I think. A loop pass from Joe Bryant to Julia Serving, who was thoroughly and very noticeably banged in the back by Mike Gale. He gave a little shove in the back. Well, look at it again. Gale knew he was beaten on the play. Perfect feed. Inside Irving, right there, Gale to shove him in the back before he let him go up and put the shot up. Got to be a good play because Julius comes down and goes back up. It's going to be a two point slam. <laughs> Irving is a 75% free throw shooter. You see, he is performing even better in the playoffs than he did during the regular season. 77% in playoffs. An average of 26.8 in the first five games against San Antonio. Of course, he had the most productive game of any player in the series, hit for 39 in one game. We are now tied up, and so we are locked in turnovers also at nine, but the bottom line, the number is 48-48. Philadelphia and San Antonio. As we're down now to 108 to play first half. Offensive rebound by a 6-3 guard, Mike Gale. When I played Joe Bryant, misjudged his leap, the 6 time forward from the south for Philadelphia. And when he went up, he misjudged it, came back down, and that left uh, Gale there for the rebound, and he got the layup. Maurice Cheeks back the other way. Not quite enough there, and here's an outlet pass tipped away by Mix. He's played the good floor game, has been cutting off the passing lanes for Philadelphia, has stopped a number of breaks. But he tipped that one out of bounds, and so, with 47 seconds left to play first half, San Antonio comes down at their leisure, looking to set it up and work for the good shot. 50 to 48 Spurs. 
Heenan harassed. Here's Silas. Julius Irving almost took it away. What do we have here? Got a foul in Philadelphia. It's going to be Bobby Jones reaching in from behind, trying to knock that ball away. And again, San Antonio will have three throws coming. 31 seconds left. Here's the play. Silas Irving knocked it away there. I watch Bobby Jones coming up from the free throw line. Right here, he'll reach in right there and hook the arm of Salas. So he'll have a couple of free throws. Doug Moe, his team has had good success here at the Spectrum. They've won three times here in the regular season in the playoffs. And every time that they've won here the day before, he's had a bad day at a local racetrack, so he couldn't get there yesterday. They had a practice, but he told the Philadelphia trainer to go over and bet on the worst horse he could find for him. Really a likable guy. Both of these coaches, Billy Cunningham and Doug Moe, real nice personality. Longtime friends from Brooklyn, Moe and Cunningham, and from North Carolina, and now with 22 seconds left to play, first half. Murray's Cheeks takes a look, and what do we have here? Someone threw an elbow inside on the Philadelphia 76ers, and he got caught. Steve Mix, the offensive foul. Away from the ball. That's his second foul. Now, NBA rules on offensive fouls, you don't, do not take free throws. So San Antonio will have possession and they'll look for the last shot of the first half. They're up by four. Don't forget following this game today you'll see the seventh and deciding game of the Washington Atlanta series. Right now with time running out in the first half Mark Oberding fires the 18 foot jump shot and inside Billy Paltz arms akimbo goes flying out of bounds. He was fouled. And the penalty is going to play a factor again. A loose ball foul. Billy Paltz will have a chance to put two more points on the board. And Rod, we see just three seconds on the scoreboard clock. So San Antonio could take this in with a six point lead if Paltz can hit the next two. He could also get the hat trick. 0 for 3. He's been averaging 6.8 in playoff play. Obviously bothered by that hamstring pull. He's not moving like he normally does. Well, he's working hard, though, it's certain, but he's gunning down the floor. Joe Bryan throws up something. A little too much on it, and the first half comes to an end. So the San Antonio Spurs, a two-point leader at the end of the first period, extend that lead to five. As we go to halftime, it's 53-48 San Antonio. Stay tuned now for NBA Highlights. At the conclusion of today's game, and each of our NBA telecast during the season, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game. In conjunction with this award, Chevrolet will present a check for $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the Players College or University. Any student may be eligible to benefit from these scholarship funds. Today's winner will be announced at the end of the telecast. Hot Rod Hundley, you and I will be voting for the MVP. And should we disagree, our producer, David Fox, will cast the deciding vote. Dave Fox, our producer here today. Bob Dunphy, our director. Chuck Milton, our executive producer of NBA Basketball. And we've got a lot of it coming up. We have the seventh game of Washington and Atlanta following this game. And now for a report on that game, let's go to Brent Musburger in Landover, Maryland. All right, Don, thank you very much. The world champion Washington Bullets are now filing into their locker room. This is a videotape of game five when the Atlanta Hawks came back here and won in Landover, forcing the series back to Atlanta. And of course, you all know that the Hawks won down there. And now today, we have the ultimate, really, in a playoff game seven. And with me is the most valuable player, the team leader of the Washington Bullets, center Wes Unseld. And Wes, I know that you prefer action to speak louder than words, but what are your emotions? so far on the series that's unfolded against Atlanta? Well, I don't really have any emotions. It's, it's been a good series. It's been a, a series played with intensity, and it's, uh, you know, that uh, it's, it's caused excitement in both towns. So, you know, that's good for basketball, and that means it's good for all of us. Are you surprised at how Atlanta has played so far in the six games? No, we knew that they were a very good team. Uh, if we didn't uh, do the things that we were supposed to do, that they're very capable of beating us. What must you do today to beat Atlanta? Probably more than anything, just execute. Uh, I think if we do that and, you know, show some intensity and play with intensity, uh, our chances are just as good as theirs. Wes, thank you very much. Hubie Brown, of course, has done a good job with the Atlanta Hawks. Let's go out now to Rick Berry, who's standing by with the Atlanta coach. Thanks a lot, Brent. Yubi, it's been a long time coming, but I think you have finally gotten some respect with this Atlanta ball club. Got a great game coming up here this afternoon. What can we look for? Well, I think it's going to be physical like the 10 previous games this year, but fortunately for us, we've been able to play them even 5-5 five and five, and now 3-3 three and three in the series. 
I, I feel that what we must take away, Rick, is the quick outlet pass to the guard at the 28-foot marker and deny Hayes and Danridge the long pass for the dunk when they release on us. In the last two games, we've been able to do that. And then we also must get them in the lane if we can deny the post-ups, get the three-second counts, which we have been doing, and take the offensive charges, which we're averaging about six or seven a game. That should be enough to get the job. Well, you'll be, we're looking forward to the ball game. Good luck to you. You've done a great job. Back to you, Brent. All right, Rick. We're going to have a sellout crowd in Landover, in excess of 19,000. Among those, the President of the United States, Jimmy Carter, will be with us this afternoon. It is going to be some showdown. Game seven, Atlanta and Washington. Let's go back to Philadelphia now. Don Crickey and Hot Rod Huntley. Thank you, Brad. And back here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, as you see, it is San Antonio 53, Philadelphia 48. We're almost ready to get it going here in the third period as both teams are back on the floor. We'll be back in a moment. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Chevrolet and your neighborhood Chevrolet dealer who invites you to test drive the first Chevy in the 80s. Citation. Light beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln National Life Insurance Company. We're easy to remember. And by Midas. Over 1,000 Midas shops coast to coast. They're specialists in mufflers and shocks. This is Don Crickey back at the Spectrum. And now for an update, let's go back to Rod Hundley. All right, Don, we had Julia serving with this document playing at a guard. And I know that's got to be a tough position for you, even though you did very well Thursday night at San Antonio. Oh, uh, thank you, Rod. It is a tough position, uh, especially since I haven't played there all year long. But uh, we tried to go with a big lineup, and hopefully uh, we can neutralize them on the boards. But it seems like they're playing a possessed game, so I'm going to spend a little less time in the backcourt defensively this half and more time on the boards, you know, helping our big guys, because that's, that's where the game's going to be won or lost. Brother, you're down by five, and it is a physical game. They have an extremely tough club up front like yourself. It is physical, but we got guys who can be physical, too, and uh, we just have to reach them at halftime and let them come out and play their game. Okay, Doc, good luck to you. All right, thank you. Okay, Don. There you go, Julius Irving, as he in the first half did not shoot that often. Julius Irving only put up nine shots, hit four. Big factor, offensive rebounding we've been talking about. There's the overall shooting percentages. San Antonio, a team that shot poorly at home the last time out, not shooting that well percentage-wise, but getting a lot of shots, doing well at the free throw line. And the offensive rebound disadvantage 15 to 7, and they've subsequently turned those 15 offensive rebounds into what turns out to be 15 points. 76 with only seven. They turn their offensive rebounding into five points. Both teams turning the ball over at about the usual rate for a pro basketball. Doug Moe huddles with his team now. The Spurs, who've had good success here at Philadelphia, coming off a poor showing at home the last time out. They can wrap up the series today. So the 76ers, a team that has been under pressure from their local press for the past three seasons, people expecting the 76ers to go the distance, and they've not. They'll be fighting the last two quarters, Rod. All right, San Antonio scoring. Gervin had 11. Salas and Overding each with 10. And the rest tells itself. On the boards, it was 13 offensive rebounds for San Antonio against only six by Philadelphia. That's your big difference. And they converted on for 15 points on 13 of those rebounds. Right now, we have a five-point advantage for the San Antonio Spurs as Daryl Dawkins has the ball. Here is Julius Irving looking to head toward the basket. They double him up. And now Dawkins fires up. They back off the big man, the man child. He is tough to muscle with inside. Here's a whistle as these officials, three good men, working a very, very strong game. Jake O'Donnell, John Vanek, Paul Mahalik. They're in control, have been throughout. Here's your play. Caldwell Jones grabbing a rebound. Mike Green will be called for the foul right there, coming across his arm as he tried to put that shot up. Big Mike hustling uh, inside, but not getting much help on that play. Again, Philadelphia started aggressively here on the board. They're going to have to do that if they're going to get back. Oh, well, Jones, who hit for 13 first half points to lead all scores at the free throw line, and he gives. Philadelphia hits 49th point, down by four now. Rebound comes to Silas. Silas working in the backcourt with George Gervin. Gervin with limited playing time. He has three personal fouls. Working against Cheeks is a big height over match. Gervin at 6'7". Cheeks at 6'1". He'll post him to jump over him, but he cannot do that when he doesn't have the ball. Cheeks goes the other way. And Maurice Cheeks makes a big, big play, and they negate the basket. Oh, the we got a 
blocking foul on a play. Watch again as Cunningham is jumping up and down. Here's Cheeks taking the ball in from the left side. He'll go all the way under, lay it up and in. Right on the play, Irving blocked off. He took the defense away with a pick, moving pick. And here's a foul now inside. This will go against Cheeks. Cheeks frustrated. Look, look at that play from another angle. Now here's Julius down low right there, making that block. Uh, good, good play right there. You can see it perfectly clear as he held the defensive man away that disallowed the basket by Maurice Cheeks. Good, smart play by Julius. Officials had it now. George Kirvin up and over the defense, knocks it down. And San Antonio extends its lead to 6, 55 to 49, 10.55 to play third period. Pressure is on the 76ers. They feel the heat now. As they are down in a game they have to win, and Dawkins goes up, and apparently Oberding body checked in is called for the foul. Uh, that'll be before the shot. I, again, double teamed in there, trying to help uh, Oberding on Dawkins, but Mark got him around the body for the foul. You can see him down low. Look at him pushing and shoving as Dawkins is jockeying for position with Oberding. Irving now gets it down low to Bobby Jones, feeds off to Cheeks. Two men hit the deck. Oberding goes down. Jones goes down. And Jones is called for the charge as Oberding took position. Let's watch it. There's a play. Bobby committed himself. He took the pass from Irving, went into the air, had nothing to do but come down right in the lap of Mark Oberding, who's been all over that floor defensively for San Antonio. So now the Spurs with a six point lead go low to George Gervin, and he is fouled by Cheeks. Cheeks has little alternative but to hack him because. Gervin will jump right over him. Gervin just took him low, turned to his right. Cheeks did the smart thing as far as. George Gervin played at Eastern Michigan as a collision. He hits the free throws, and now the San Antonio Spurs open up their biggest lead of the basketball game. Eight points. That's a very comfortable feeling, I'm sure, for Doug Moe to have Gervin play only nine minutes in the first half, yet his club was ahead by five at halftime. To the basket goes Bobby Jones does not get the roll green sweeps down the defensive board for San Antonio and Silas calls the play heading up court with the ball. James Silas takes a look Irving against him. They're looking to go to Gervin that's the ball game right now Gervin against Cheek that's an overmatch on height. Green's going to take one himself. That's your pure shooter and here comes the rebound back to Cheeks to Jones for the slam dunk. And the 76ers get points up the run with Bobby Jones on the payoff end. Uh, Cheeks really accelerated down the middle. Perfect timing to Bobby coming up on the right side. He had Irving on the left, but Julius was trailing the play, and he smartly went to the, the man up front, and that was Jones. Bobby Jones now has seven points. They pick up the chant here at the Spectrum as Keenan rims the hoop, and Dawkins sweeps it down, guns the ball out to Cheeks. He's been the mover, the quarterback for Philadelphia. Julius serving now, playing against Silas. What do we have here as Jake O'Donnell comes in and blows the whistle? Looks like Julius Irving's going to go to the free throw line. The foul's going to be against San Antonio. Watch the move by the doctor. The split two defenders. Go left, leap back to his right, spin it up with the left hand with English. The shot crashed off the glass, but he drew the foul. Timeout, Spurs by six. Jones inbounds the ball to Cheeks. Philadelphia with the ball. They there, turn it over, Rod. There's a play you should never, it should never happen in pro basketball, any basketball that matter. Caldwell Jones turned his head away from the ball, and Bobby Jones passed it to him, and he wasn't even looking for the ball. Gotta watch the basketball. Keep your eye on the ball just about every game they play one with. But there's only one ball out there. <laughs> Oftentimes we need two with some of the guys. But it is now 59 to 51, an eight-point advantage for San Antonio. Again, 8:55 to play third period. The Iceman George Gervin starting to heat up. He's got 17. Now back the other way. With points for Philadelphia is Cheeks. He's now scored eight. Irving set that one up, broke the left side, and gave it to Cheeks, who just dived down the middle and banked it in. Mike Green loops it down to Irving. They're doubling up on him, and Cheeks is all over the floor. If that ball's loose. He's there. Bobby Jones goes after the ball. Philadelphia now playing with Daryl Dawkins, Bobby Jones, Caldwell Jones, Julius Irving, and Maurice Cheeks, the same five men at the start of the basketball game. The Spurs going with Kobe Dietrich back in the game, James Silas, George Gervin, Larry Keenan, and Mike Green. Pulse must rest periodically, playing with a troubled right thigh, a muscle pull. Deep, the deep pull, he's got a problem with it. 
Might have tightened up at halftime. Silas comes up with a loose ball. There's a big play by James Silas. He throws the ball, loses Irving, and then goes up and lays it out. Doc, let him get away and try to knock the ball away from behind. That's a very careless play defensively, and Silas got an easy shot out of it. Six rejected by Mike Green. 76ers protesting a goal 10. This year right there says no. Green's done a good job for this ball club, filling in for Billy Fox. Good timing on that leap as he blocked that shot by Cheeks. Gervin comes around top. Dietrich picks for him. No shot there, and they go back to Silas to Keenan. They're looking for Gervin. They want him low. Roby Dietrich heads in, loses the handle, but it comes back inbound to San Antonio. Here's that block by Green a moment ago. Watch Cheeks go in. Here comes Mike Green on the top of your screen, coming from behind Overdane, goes right up and blocked it. That's real hustle. Good play. And an offensive goal 10 called against San Antonio, costing them a shot, and the basketball is back over to Philadelphia now. Jake O'Donnell says right here, he's got a foul on the Spurs. That'll be George Gervin. That's his fourth. I quickly duck Mo. It's going to get him out of there. He'll come back with Mike Gale. Not a very judicious time for George Gervin to hack at the ball. A meaningless foul there, except it cost him his fourth, and now Mo is up. Here's a look at your personal fouls. Overding and Gervin with four for San Antonio. Mike Green with three. I know Philadelphia player with more than three. As you know, they get six, and that's it. Oh, well, Jones fights for the rebound, and Kobe Dietrich might have bumped him going for the ball, so we could have another one on San Antonio, and fouls could be a very decisive factor in the third period, and still with 7.25 left. A lot of team fouls on the board for San Antonio. They're over the limit already. Boy, that really makes a difference. Seven minutes and 25 seconds left here in the third quarter, and we'll shoot free throws. Mo and George Gervin, a star on the bench. Doug, very nervous young man. He knows that Philadelphia has momentum. They won that game Thursday in San Antonio. He wants to get this thing over this afternoon. If it goes to a seventh game, that would be Wednesday night at the Hemisphere in San Antonio. Billy C. Oh, well, Jones takes time, takes aim, and lets it rip. He got it. Sixers back now, two within six points. Philadelphia following picks up the chant again. Building packed as Mike Gale drives in, lays off to Green. What do we have at travel call on San Antonio? The Spurs start to lose control at this point in the third period, allowing Philadelphia to get back in the game as Julius Irving is back in. That call was a little quick one. Mike Green never really had control of him. They called him for traveling. That's a big break for Philadelphia. And the fans are really getting behind the 76ers. They want him to start picking up the momentum and get back in this game. Irving fires a tough shot against a two-man defense against him, and Keenan comes down with a rebound. He can fly with the ball at 6-9. Keenan takes it right on through, and Larry Keenan throws up. That's a good call. He overcommitted himself. Philadelphia had him trapped defensively, and when he went into the air, he came back down with it before he threw the shot up. So we got a timeout. Take it. Six minutes and 53 seconds in the third quarter here in Philadelphia. And San Antonio leading 3-2, to two, lead 61-55. At this point, everybody's yelling for the 76ers. Well, he's not too worked up about that little man there. <laughs> That little baby is not too excited about things, but the Philadelphia fans are on their feet. They're up and cheering. Dawkins loses the ball. He might have been fouled by Dietrich. He's protesting that he was, but the ball turns over to San Antonio, right? Well, that steal had put, quickly put him right back in their seats. <laughs> That's right. The steal or the hoop will shut up the home crowd. This will pick him up, though. The turnover is Mike Green. Forgot rule one. You must bounce the ball when you advance with it. <laughs> You cannot travel. run in this game with the ball. And I tuck that under your arm. Here are your turnovers. Philadelphia 14, San Antonio 13. Both clubs getting a little careless with that ball. It is 61 to 55. Philadelphia down by six in the game. The 76ers must win. Bobby Jones working hard just to maintain the ball. Sheiks fires. Spurs working hard, and Dietrich gets the ball. Almost lost it. He did. Stepped out of bounds. Kobe Dietrich making a fine play, but then he was on the inbound line, and so the 76ers get it back, and they need it back badly now. 
Six oh nine to play. They're down by six. San Antonio having a problem. Standing prosperity. They have had to lead. Things haven't worked right. Here's an offensive foul. That's a big break. Dawkins got a hoop, but take it away. He leaned in. Charging call. Here's your play again. Dawkins will lean in. The Kobe Dietrich turn right there. Elbowed him with a right arm as he tried to go in for that jumper. That's four on Dawkins from another angle. Here's Dawkins. Watch him take that shoulder right in. There you go. And Dietrich went calling away. I don't think Kobe needed a lot of help to go down. He got the foul call. Dawkins rebounds. Here's Cheeks. Three Spurs are back. Two Sixers are coming down on the run. So Cheeks on an overmatch pulls up. San Antonio had the overmatch on defense. Down low to Dawkins. Here's a hack. Mike Green swinging at the ball. Got Dawkins. I think Kobe Dietrich actually had quite strong enough to play Dawkins down that low as Darrell took him left to right in the lane. They are going to give it now to Dietrich. There is Dawkins. His foul a short time ago is his fourth of the game. And there are Spurs in foul trouble. They are in trouble as a team here in the third period. Have been in the over the limit for some time. Dawkins wins the hoop. Daryl Dawkins in his fourth year, right out of Maynard Evans High School, Orlando, Florida. Never played college basketball. He averaged seven fouls per 48 minutes of play this year. Yet he didn't uh, foul out of any games that he started in, and that was 12 times he was a starter. We have 5.28 left to play third period. 61-55. San Antonio in the lead. Keenan coming down low. Jones moving at him. They're going to give Keenan a foul call. Oh, back and in. They call that one. He is really upset. The referees are really calling things close. Well, look again. Here's Keenan will go down low. Back in his way in. And they call him for a foul. I didn't really think that should have gone that way. By the way, the Spurs are getting fouls called on them. We might have Louis Dampier Look playing at, the pivot by the end. Why Irving and Gale both went down <laughs> underneath. Daryl Dawkins, what's all this? Daryl Dawkins playing schoolyard basketball to the disadvantage on the play of Philadelphia. One against four and going to do it. They've been locked on this score. Look at that block. Go to me. Dawkins knocked it away. Well, I tell you, you got these officials. They know what they want to call, and they do not back away. There's your play right there. Salas put it up, and look at Daryl way up there. Perfect on the shot. Good work by our young people, Mr. Fox and Mr. Dumpy in the club. Yes, it was indeed. And our whole CBS crew here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, where we have 4:44 left to play, third period. Sixers down by eight. Oh, well, Jones having some trouble now after a good shooting streak early in the game. He was the high point man at the half of 13. Larry Keenan did a little twirl there and lost it all. That was a good call. No one touched him on the play. He just lost his dribble and went right out of bounds with the ball. And Philadelphia, even though they're not playing well, they have been stuck on 55 points for some three or four <laughs> minutes, good. yet they're still in the game. They're only eight back. If they could just get it together. Here comes Eric Money. It's his first appearance. The little guard, he can fire him up. He can pick up the tempo. Money can go. He's a fast backcourt player. Tipped on the play. It'll come back in down to the 76ers. They have been stuck on 55 for some time, but the game has gotten sloppy during this stretch. There have been a lot of turnovers. Exactly. a very aggressive play. They haven't scored in three minutes, Philadelphia. Exactly three minutes. Oh, well, Jones shoots. The roll is down to guard Mike Gale, and he starts down very quickly. Firehouse basketball, they call it in San Antonio. Bells clang and sirens ring, and they like to run game to game. 48 minutes. Philadelphia flat footed defensively. Bobby Jones gets that foul. A Salas just took it right to him. There were three defenders back there, and he charged right through the alley. Philadelphia just not playing with the intensity that they should have at this moment of the game. Salas will get two free throws. James Salas, some thought, was the best guard in the ABA. Then he underwent knee surgery a couple of years ago, missed most of the last two seasons. Rehabilitated and came back strong this year. He's been back in peak form, and there is Henry Bibby back in the back line of Philadelphia. So they're going to go with the small guards, Money and Bibby. Nine point lead now, Hot Rod. Cunningham is desperately trying to find some offense. Working combinations. Eric Money throws one up and down low to get position is Larry Keenan, an all-star forward for San Antonio. 
quickness in the Philadelphia backcourt trying to trap the ball before the Spurs can get a cross court over the timeline. Dietrich outside looks to Gale. A lot of motion now. Keenan running low comes off the baseline. He's going to fire cross court, and Dietrich had to be that tall to keep it from going out of bounds. They got one second. They won't get it away. No. 24 second clock expired. So they play good team, team defense there. Philadelphia will get the ball back. Excellent team defense. The opposing coaches out with their instructions, although they're not hurt at all in this din here in the spectrum. 3.30 left to play. Third period. Nix gets the ball, runs out of bounds with it. Comes back to San Antonio and James Silas. They are just not playing alert ball. That ball was hit Nix in the face to start with, and then he stumbled with it, fell out of bounds. So. San Antonio with a nine point lead can run it up. San Antonio playing a controlled game now. They're moving the ball with caution up the floor, running the game clock down, but we still have the whole fourth period to go and 3 10 to go in the third period. James Silas lets her rip. Rebound taken down nicely by Caldwell Jones. Outlet to Eric Money. Vivi on the right flank gets the ball and pulls up for an 18 foot shot. Bobby Jones offensive rebound back to Money. Still on consecutive tries the 76ers cannot get it to fall and Keenan on the run comes back down the floor for San Antonio to James Silas down low to Kobe Dietrich if that goes anything will but the follow up does by Keenan perfect timing by Keenan again Philadelphia flat footed and no one blocked Keenan out he followed off the glass left side and got the field goal and the Spurs are cooking here in Philadelphia. They are cooking indeed, and now down by 11, Billy Cunningham brings his 76ers over on a timeout. 2.40 to play, third period. We'll be back in a moment. Big Billy Pulse. He looks like a big Texas Ranger. All business. He's back out on the floor. <laughs> but those spurs that'll jingle jangle. Big Billy. He got that business on his hip. Down low it goes to Daryl Dawkins. Pressure on the 76ers. They're down by 11. Now they work the good play, but Nick can't can look at Henry Bibby. Bumped hard. There's no foul. Bibby was, Bibby was bumped by Mix, his own man. He had a wide open shot, but, he, but Nix bumped him and not, knocked the ball free from him. Here's the play. Watch Bibby get the rebound. Oh, Mix right there. <laughs> That's right. Now I see why there was no foul, Hot Rod. Actually, it was more, I think, Bibby's fault than Mix. He jumped into Mix. His own man. Now the 76ers who've gone over six minutes without a field goal here in the third period get some points. The first points of the game for Eric Money. It's a 66-57 game. We're down to 2.05 to go. Third period. James Silas pulls up, fires for San Antonio, and he gets a lucky one, but he'll accept that. Took a spur bounce on that big high arch shot. Got a good bounce out of it. James Silas has started to come on now in the second half. He is the leading scorer in the basketball game with 17 points. Caldwell Jones with that 16 for Philadelphia. But all he's got in the second half is three free throws. He's not hit a field goal. Dawkins wants to go up. Oberding out of the game now. It fouls Dietrich out of him. He had him. They didn't call him. Dawkins, show you how strong he is. He put that ball on the floor. Dietrich reached in and had him tied up momentarily, but Dawkins just pulled it away from him and hit the shot. And Philadelphia again trails by nine points. San Antonio frustrating the 76ers with this waiting game, this control game. Dietrich feeds. Keenan puts it up. And the rebound is to Jones. Philadelphia wants to run, and now they get the chance. Here comes Bibby down the middle. Lead pass right flank goes to Daryl Dawkins. The shot you don't want your center taking, but the 76ers save the ball. Blocked by Pulse. Money retained. feed into Dawkins. The shot was blocked by Paul so money Got it back. Left-handed yo-yo dunk. Look at that one. Pull that one out of his shoe. Down low to Keenan. And he gets one back the other way. He right in the face of a slot block attempt by Dawkins. He just threw a fastball right by Dawkins. He tried to swipe at it. Missed it. Dawkins heard it. He didn't see it. That time Dawkins is called for traveling. Got a little too fancy on that play. Went across the lane, left to right, calm on the ball, where he should have been protecting it with the left hand and putting the shot up on the run. So the net result of those three consecutive plays is to the disadvantage of Dawkins in Philadelphia. He got the slam dunk, gave up one at the other end, then turned the ball over. We've got only 28 seconds left in the third quarter, and the Spurs are up by nine. 
And don't forget, we'll be going to Landover, Maryland for the seventh and deciding game of the Atlanta Hawks Washington Bullet Series after this game. Here comes Julia Serving. 17 seconds to Doctor. Feeds to Eric Money, pulling up. Money doesn't get the roll. And Larry Keenan, positioning well, gets the rebound. And as these Philadelphia forwards try to get back to shut him off, Keenan again brings it down in a break. Oh, we got a foul against Philadelphia and a bad foul with only three seconds left in the third quarter. It'll be Bibby on the foul. For Irving to give it to Julius Irving. Salas will get two free throws. He was off balance. And he's forced a shot, trying to beat the clock, which he was successful at. Only three seconds remaining. The Spurs have been over the foul limit for over eight minutes of this period, but 76ers unable to take advantage of it. Philadelphia's only 14 fouls. Now Salas at the free throw line with 18 points for the day. That's a big play. That was a four point play because Money had missed an easy shot at the other end. How did you come back and get San Antonio two points that runs them up by 10? Here's Gale stealing the ball. Shot doesn't go. The buzzer sounds. And so the San Antonio Spurs up by five and a half. Extend that lead to 11. And there's some whooping and hollering going on down in Texas. Yeah. With Hot Rod Henry, this is Don Crickey back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. You see the scores. We start the fourth period. The San Antonio Spurs with a good third quarter. The 76ers with an horrendous one. They hit only five out of 22 shots. Philadelphia did in the third quarter. Gervin, the Iceman, he does tricks right into his bag and pulls out a turnaround bank shot. And all of a sudden, it is a 13-point disadvantage the 76ers have to dig out from. Money fires. He gets it. Philadelphia's come out of their game a little bit, Rod. They're using a lot of lineup combinations trying to generate offense. Well, they had that dry spell in the third quarter that really hurt them. They buried themselves by 11. They're going to have to come back. they got plenty of time. Mark Oberding in the game. He was a did not play in the third period because of foul problems. Played just bri briefly at the outset of the period. Henry Bibby picks up his first personal foul and Billy Paltz goes off the floor limping. He's given it all he has got to stay in this game with a bruised thigh. Mike Green, the count comes back in. Count Green. He has counted in this game, I'll tell you that. He's played well. <laughs> he has. You don't want the count shooting from here, though. He's liable to hit somebody in the road. Hey. Count is not your good outside shooter. Keenan follows up the miss shot and Larry Keenan hits the rebound. Billy Paltz says, Way to go, my man. <laughs> the ball is bouncing right in the hands of San Antonio as Philadelphia fumbled the ball on the rebound. Keenan there for the easy lay. A 13 point lead now for San Antonio. The season could end today for Philadelphia. Henry Bibby drives one down for the 76ers, brings them back to an 11. 10 40 to play in the game. Mike Gale working in the backdoor. He's played a good control game. He's gotten some big hoops. You'll recall the one he got early. But he went inside, got an offensive rebound, and put it back up to break a tie. Now Green shoots. Dawkins rejects. And Julius Irving gets the ball out to Bibby. Steve Nix comes in, crashes the offensive board, goes back up and gets it. It's a sure hustle on the part of Steve Nix. Tremendous play. Went in there hard, banging in from the right side, and followed it up for the layup. Nix now has nine. 76-67, Philadelphia trailing. San Antonio with the ball. Oberding down low, gets it to Keenan, loses his man with a fake. Dawkins rejects. Tips it out to Money. Here comes Julius Irving. Oberding cuts off the pass, and Julius finds it down, shooting over and up. The whole play was Daryl Dawkins making a block on the shot that could have been two points for San Antonio. And here comes Philadelphia right back in the game. Philadelphia starts to move it now. Keenan waits again. He is rejected by Dawkins. Bibby comes low, and he was grabbed by George Gervin. And all of a sudden, the 76ers turn it around, and now they're back in it. San Antonio should get a timeout here and slow down this momentum. Daryl Dawkins has been unbelievable. That last block was his third straight, and it took away Gervin. Would have been another layup. Gervin will come out. Put it up your ball. Nix takes a look down low. Steve Nix doubled up, fighting, works his way. 
Everybody's getting a piece of the ball. You just don't get a clean basketball and walk away with it in there. It's rough inside. Knicks tried to make a leap and lean move underneath, but it was no soap on that play as uh, San Antonio played him smartly. Here's the play. He leaned in, missed it. Ball came right back to him. He was stepped out of bounds as he picked the ball up. 9-12 left to play. San Antonio with the lead in a game that can give them the series if they win it. James Silas pulls up. Now they've gone cold, and Dawkins has begun to dominate in the office down inside. That's what he does business. It's a big man's game. Isn't it? Irving lost the handle, but Dawkins comes off to play and slam dunks the ball down. It's a five-point game. Nice pass there, Julius. The ball actually slipped out of his head. San Antonio is going to take a timeout. And they love it here in Philadelphia. Here's the last play. As Dawkins got the duck off the play for Julia Irving. Five point San Antonio lead. But before we get there, Doug Moe wants to talk to this basketball team. Nope, he's not going to call a timeout. Kobe Dietrich comes in, playing with Oberding, Larry Keenan, George Gerben, and James Silas. And there's Mr. Cheeks. Maurice, you can get it done. Serving faces a double team, looks to jump over it. Silas blocks the ball. It's called for a foul. Oh, that's a tough call. Doug Moe cannot believe it. I can't blame him. As Silas would have looked like he cleanly blocked it away, but they call a foul. Here's Irving, double team. He'll turn his back, go in the air, looking for the shot. Silas moves in. I watch him go up and block the ball away, and they call a foul. Right there. That's a tough call. Third foul on Silas, third team foul. 76ers have 14 fouls here in the fourth period. There's your man Cheeks. Four minutes to go. It's a one-point game, Philadelphia. It's season seemingly closing out, dying away. Now it's very much alive. The 76ers rally back there within one. 84 to 83. Irvin will work on Cheeks. They're going to put the ice man. Cheeks knocked it away. Here comes Jonas Irving. Dietrich is back. Irving to the basket, and Gervin gets it back. He wanted to do it all alone and could not against three defenders. Bobby Jones comes off the play. Rebounds. Kobe Dietrich throws it. It's saved. Gervin shoots. This is crazy. Boy, is it getting rough under there? Jake O'Donnell's got a call. It's going to go to Philadelphia. Bobby, they are battling for that basketball underneath. Crazy inside right now. Coach Cunningham said, Let's do something. Not lose our decorum here, boys. Get a play working. 319 left to go. 84 83, San Antonio. Philadelphia with a chance to take the lead. Julius Irving down low to Dawkins. And wisely, he kicks it back out to Cheeks, who knocks it down. San Antonio every time down is double teaming the ball when it goes low. And as you remark, smart play by Dawkins. He didn't force the shot and he gave it to Cheeks. Oberding down low to George Gervin. The Iceman can't get it to work, but Kobe Dietrich. He's not a finesse player. He's got to use everything he's got all the time. He's out there working hard. He slapped at the ball. Pushed the man away and got the tap in and San Antonio leaves as you review now the personal foul. Gervin agreeing each but five. Here's Dawkins. Dawkins now playing a very heady basketball game. He'd like to slam dunk if they realized it wasn't there. He took the defense up with him and banked it in. And Philadelphia gets back to lead. 87 to 86. Two minutes and 15 seconds left to play. Oberding takes a look. Philadelphia with a good harassing defense. Oberding comes across the lane. Hits the shot that gives the Spurs a one-point lead. What a game. Unbelievable. This one's going to go right to the wire. No question. 88-87. Playoff basketball on CBS, and there's more to foul as Julius Irving goes to the basket. Two men go down. Dietrich hit the deck hard. There's no foul as the basket go ride. Good move. It does. Lean right into Kobe Dietrich. And Julius putting the ball up with the right hand from the left side off the glass. Very soft shot. 89-88, Philadelphia with the lead. We have a minute and 40 seconds to go. Ju Gervin tries to shoot. Keenan loses the ball, but it comes inbounds to San Antonio. Beautiful block by Julius Irving. 
came out of nowhere to block the shot by Gerving from behind over his right shoulder. The save that could have been two points. Cunningham asking, why not our ball? So far, haven't they? You bet. Doug Moe also wants to know what's going on. Here's Julius coming over. We'll look at that play a moment ago. Here's the play. Gervin with a basketball, faking right, going left. Cheeks made a swipe. There's Irving with a block. And Keenan lost it out of bounds. It should have been Philadelphia ball. All right, here's the shot a moment ago. It was blocked by Gervin, and then Keenan right here dropped the ball out of bounds. And they're going to give the ball to San Antonio. Big break for the Spurs. One minute and 38 seconds left in the game. Philadelphia by one. Philly by one. Overding to the basket. He was rejected by Caldwell Jones. No foul. And now John Bennett. An injury timeout. Caldwell Jones shaking up on the play. Boy, he took it. He took the uh, shot. It looked like he may have got an elbow in the throat or in the chin. 18,276 watching this game here, Rod, at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. All of Philadelphia watching the game actually on WCAU television. The blackout lifted here. The Philadelphia 76ers seemingly their season over when they fell behind by 13 points, going six and a half minutes in the third period without a field goal, but they rally back. They changed the combinations in the backcourt. Dawkins went inside, started to dominate, and now the 76ers lead by one with a minute and a half to play. And now Domenico, the trainer of Philadelphia, is down in the game. He walked out and touched Caldwell Jones, and he's all right. He'll stay in the game. It's done. He put on that hurt no more, and he's ready to go. Julius Irving to the basket, feeding off. What do we have? Knocked out of bounds, Philadelphia ball. I know one thing. You want officials like these who've been here before. This has turned into a great game. 89 to 88, Philadelphia. Somebody hit the microphone there. So Julius Irving will bring it back in. Bobby Jones is in the game. Carwell Jones, Daryl Dawkins, and Maurice Cheeks. Silas, Dietrich. Oberding, Gervin, and Larry Keenan on the playing floor for San Antonio. Julius Serving takes a look. He fires too much on it, but the rebound is tipped away by Dietrich. It comes back inbound to the 76ers as you see the game clock superimposed. 109 to go. Paul well, Jones did a good job of holding Dietrich inside when the ball bounded long and he could not get to it to control it. Philadelphia ball. All right, here is Chiefs pulling up. Big rebound. Keenan has the ball. We're inside a minute. 59 to go, and the Spurs now will have to play it for the good shot. Silas has been their quarterback throughout the game. He pulls up, takes it himself. Didn't get there. And Dawkins did. Darrell Dawkins goes up over the San Antonio rebounders, takes it down for the Sixers. They still got plenty of time. Philadelphia leads, but San Antonio will get the ball back. They've got to avoid the foul. Oh, Irving lost it out of bounds. Julius Irving, you'll see him do that about once every 12 games. He lost the handle. It happens to all of them. And so the ball turns back over to San Antonio with 35 seconds to go. They're going to take a timeout. 35 seconds left. They can elect to take a quick shot knowing they'll get the ball back, or they can work it for a good one. We'll see how they play it. 89 88, Philadelphia. We are back with 35 seconds to play. This is Don Cricky with Rod Hundley, NBA playoff basketball on CBS. As the Philadelphia 76ers down by 13 points are now with a one point lead, but San Antonio has the ball, Rod. And Philadelphia cannot do afford a foul. If they foul, it'll automatically put them in at a penalty and two free throws for the Spurs. They're gonna have to play good, solid team defense. Silas goes over to Gervin. He has been the ace all season long. Gervin pulls up, kicks it out to Silas. Big, big shot on the way and down for San Antonio. The Spurs take the lead. 20 seconds to play, and the Sixers call timeout. There's Silas' spot right at the free throw line, and Gervin set it up beautifully. He penetrated the baseline to the left side, went into the air, brought two defenders to him, then found Silas wide open. We'll look at it again. And what a play by Gervin. Very cool. The ice went with a big play. Here it is. Watch him leave him. Here's Gervin coming to help. Gervin jackknifed the pass back to Silas all alone and he calmly went up. 16 foot jumper. Backspin. Perfect rotation. Bottom of the net. And San Antonio has a one point lead with 20 seconds to go. And Billy Cunningham has gone to the drawing board. 
James Silas, coolly under fire, makes that net jump, and he gives San Antonio back the lead, as you see Coach Cunningham drawing. Usually, most of the time, these things don't work towards the end because people are just so heated up. He's got a turnover or somebody bounces off somebody's head or off a foot. He's got five students there that better be listening because with their 20 seconds, they could be out of the playoffs if they don't get a hoop here or a foul. Now, on the other end, San Antonio has three team fouls. Doug Moe talking to his club defensively. Either way, it's been a great basketball game all the way. James Silas playing with such remarkable cool in the backcourt when the pressure shots were needed has hit 11 of 21. He has scored 27 points for the game. And James Silas is our leading candidate for the MVP award hot rod. Now our thanks to our executive producer Chuck Milton, our producer Dave Fox, our director today Bob Dunphy, our associate producer Joan Batano, Ken Richards, Joe Tier, Bob Perringer, Irv Hartman, Al Brusson, Fred Lopez, Jimmy Wall, Ray Fiedler, our entire CBS crew here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, and there's more NBA playoff basketball to come. But we've got a big, big 20 seconds down the stretch here before we go to Landover, Maryland, and Washington and Atlanta in that seventh game. This is the game clock. It's down to 11. It's good. Ten seconds left. San Antonio calls a timeout. Don't you love it? Maurice Chicks, the smallest man out there, turning inside over a big man. Extended the right arm and got the field goal. And now it rests on the shoulders of Doug Moe with Philadelphia leading by one. Ten seconds left. Yes. Here's Doug Moe's play. He's going to line up at four men, picket fence, right at the top of the circle with a man taking it out of bounds. And then they'll split off. Philadelphia defensively, in all probability, will drop back in and wait for the cutters. We've got ten seconds. Philly up by one. The heat is on San Antonio right now. They're down with 10 seconds to play. The season is on the line for Philadelphia. They've got to win this game. 10 seconds to play. A one point lead for the 76ers who rallied back from 13 points down in the second half. And a game they have to win. Keenan set to bring it in. They've got height against him, and Caldwell Jones harassing him. Tipped out of bounds by Steve Mix as the Philadelphia 76ers make it so difficult for San Antonio to inbound the ball. It will come back in, but now, as you see, nine seconds. They lost a second, but they gained position on the floor, which may be more important. They get it, bring it down lower toward the basket. Here we go. Inbounds to Silas. You see the game clock. Silas, the Iceman, didn't get it to work. Mix gets the rebound to Bobby Jones. Three seconds, Philadelphia up by one. It'll be Philadelphia basketball. They'll have it in the backcourt. A remarkable turn of events in this game and a tremendous credit to the Philadelphia team. Doug Moe on the sideline wants to talk to referee John Bannock about something. Came all the way from the bench down to the other end of the court. They are at midcourt now. I've talked it things over. So no, with John Bannock. Cunningham joins in for Philadelphia. Three seconds left in the game. Durbin just went out. That was his sixth. They had the shot. It looked like Salas may have been bumped on the shot, but no foul was called. And on the rebound play, Philadelphia came down with it. Here we A go. Remarkable turn of events. Down by two at the end of the first period. Down by five at the half. Down by 11 at the end of three quarters. Then down by 13 in the fourth period. Philadelphia rallies back. And now we have a foul against San Antonio. They had no alternative. Maurice Cheeks gets it. And he'll go to the free throw line. Cheeks. There's Doug Moe's protest. We look at a replay a bit earlier. Here's the play that they took the shot on. Salas gets away from Irving. He'll come back to his right. Go up for the shot. Now watch Irving and Colwell Jones. But no foul was called. Regular statistician Ron Pollock. Well, we have a moment here with two seconds left to play. The 76ers come back when they were seemingly gone. It'll go to a seventh game Wednesday night. And don't forget, as soon as we wrap it up here, we will be going to Landover, Maryland. 
the seventh and deciding game of the Washington Atlanta series. One second left on that missed free throw, a timeout. Oh, man. San Antonio will get the ball at midcourt. They are down by two. They could still tie this game if they can get a shot away on the inbound pass. The clock will not start until the ball is inbounded. And Doug Moe alertly said, we get the ball, let's take our time. So he'll go back to the drawing board. Atlanta and Washington next. We are back with one second to play. San Antonio down by two will inbound the ball. The 76ers send back a lot of big people to stand around the lane. All right, they're going to have one second to get a shot away. Billy Cunningham yelling instructions defensively, crossing his hands, meaning switch if they come off of you on a scissor. They're going to line up the four-man picket fence again. They're going to come out high. Keenan will inbound. They'll have a full second. They'll get a shot away and send. Silas is going to break off, looks like. Now they're going to overding. Here's a shot at the buzzer. Oh! oh in and out. It did not go. The game ends, and the Philadelphia 76ers stay alive in the NBA playoffs. They defeat the San Antonio Spurs in a great basketball game, 92 to 90. And our Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award will go to Paul Will Jones for his great play for Philadelphia. Albany State College. Albany State, the beneficiary. Now for Hot Rod Hundley, this is Don Crickey. We have more NBA playoff basketball coming up from Landover, Maryland. As this game goes to a seventh, the series goes to a seventh game, and you're going to see the seventh game of Atlanta and Washington next. Stay tuned as the NBA on CBS continues after this word from your local station.